Just kidding. Hold on. Okay. And welcome to the primetime edition of the 12 o'clock show with Mayor Joe. Uh, joining us today, Reynoldsburg City Councilwoman at large, Mildred Johnson, in her first appearance. Thank you very much for making some time today. Um, thank you for that invite. <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all sorts of cool things going on. Uh, but first off, let's start because we had an opportunity about a month ago to take a uh, what I've been calling a walk and talk with our community members. Uh, we happen to be in your neighborhood, and so you got a chance to hear some of those things. What were some of the big topics that everybody talked about? And for everybody watching, this was around Slate Ridge Boulevard. Um, one of the main things that most of the people were concerned with was the traffic with speeders. Um, they were trying to come up with all kind of ideas and ways to um, fix speeding in mm -hmm. their um, mindset. Um, they also talked about um, different things that were going on in the community or housing, um, how you come up with some of the projects. And mm -hmm. it was an interesting opportunity because we had about 15 to 18 people. Yeah. Um, most of them were um, older residents that have been in Reynoldsburg for a while and um, really wanted to voice their concerns about what they felt were um, major things, whether it be the deer crossing the street or whether it was somebody in their mind going 60 miles down Farmsbury when it's only 25. I mean, it was interesting. Um, and I thought it was a good opportunity for them to share their concerns and to directly talk with the mayor about the different things that they felt were important. Um, and they didn't hold back. <laughs> no, no, they, they did not. not. So it's good. Um, and it was a good opportunity of give and take. And I think that at the end of it, and I will applaud you publicly, is that you made an effort to satisfy some of their concerns. Um, we've got flashing stoplights, we've got animal crossings. Um, yeah, but there was a deer that was actually in the neighborhood when I, because I drove through there this morning, and the deer didn't cross at the crossing sign, so we have to go give that deer a ticket. It was very frustrating for me. Well, come get the three that are in my backyard okay. and give them a ticket too, because we have three mm -hmm. um, in our backyard, and they kind of think that it's their house. Yep. We have a, a four-legged baby who doesn't appreciate them at all, so... It's always fun when you have the dogs in there. No, but I think that I think you're right. I think, but the nice thing is, social media is great to have conversations on, and obviously I'm very engaged on that. Um, but sometimes people don't want to call City Hall, and certainly sometimes people don't want to come to City Hall. So if that's the case, I think this is an opportunity. You got to hear from some of your constituents. I got to hear from them uh, to hear actually what's going on, which was really good. I'm so probably one of those. Um, people that lack the whole social media concept. So it was good for me because it was a, an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one and it's people that you're, as a council member, there to serve. Yeah. And so you got to hear what their concerns were and they also got to meet you because a lot of them are like, well, I don't know who my council person is. And so like, it was- As a matter of fact, right there. <laughs> <laughs> it was an opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one. And you know, I've even taken walks with my husband, and some of those people that were in our mm -hmm. community walk will be like, hi, and I'm like, hello. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me a name, but hello. Yeah. It was good to see you. So it was a good time. Yeah, it was good. We've got one more tonight, but I'll give those details in a little bit. Now, you went on council, uh, you came in and took the spot of former council member Kristen Bryan. Right. Um, and so you've been on for a little while. Have we reached your year yet? I'm trying I to have reached yeah, a you've year. Reached a year. Um, I, my year was in September. There we go. Um, so, is there yeah, anything that surprised yeah. you? I mean, that's like that you weren't expecting. Um, other than the judge. Other than the twelve o'clock show. Uh, um, it was interesting because 
um, you actually realize that now you are working for the community. You are a part of trying to make things better. And mm -hmm. it's um, exciting because the city of Reynoldsburg truly is a city of respect. Um, I've got to participate in Juneteenth. I've got to participate in the Harriet Tubman Walk and health festivals and just all kind of different things, the tomato festival. And it's actually a different view from this side of the table. Yeah. Um, now it's when someone asked a question, they were like, well, why are we doing so-and-so? Oh, I can, I can actually say there's an answer for it. And so it's a lot different than um, what I expected. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing more things and being more engaged. Um, one of my um, passions that I really would like to look into is doing things that would be helping our senior community. Mm -hmm. um, so there are definitely things on the table that um, I hope to be involved in. That's really good. I, I, I agree because it's, it's always one thing once you're in there and you realize that government is government, be it national, state, or local, and sometimes things take a little bit longer than you know what anybody wants. Believe me, I, my wife would agree with me 100%. I am not the most patient person in the world, but I definitely had to learn patience because everything moves at the speed of government here. Now, yeah, there's a couple months left in 2024, and I know we had some uh, meeting earlier this year about council goals and what you know, that type of thing. Is there anything kind of, you, you mentioned a little bit about the senior citizens. Is there something that you would like kind of want to focus on, or do you have any thoughts on that, that for the rest of the year? Um, I know that you and I have talked about um, the traffic study mm -hmm. um, and being a part of that, so I'm looking forward to seeing how um, I can be helpful in that area and what kind of information I can share with the community. Um, because I think there are a lot of concerns of, about the whole speeding yeah. um, and, and speed bumps and stop signs and some kind of ramp thing or whatever yeah. to slow traffic down. So it's been um, exciting to get involved. I'm looking forward to learning more um, so that I can be able to help educate our community as to what we can do, what we cannot do, why we do or why we don't do, what streets should get this mm -hmm. or which streets, streets it's not necessary for. Um, so that's one of the projects, the traffic study that I'll be working on. And again, I'm going to see what I can do to figure out how to be helpful with our senior community. That's a, a passion for me, probably because um, I have an 87 year old mother and mm -hmm. um, there's always trying, we're always trying to figure out things to do, whether it's um, learning knitting or taking a computer class or just things that can be beneficial to our community as a whole. I think a lot of things that our senior center does um, provides those options um, and of course the, there's no illegal gambling with money exchange there, right? Hopefully not. <laughs> um, now as far as being on council, I think you've touched on a couple of these things. What's your favorite part about being on council right now? And don't say the Joe show because I know you're not, I know you're kidding on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wanted to say that. Yeah. <laughs> But I will say that being on council has afforded me the opportunity to do the Diwali Festival, to do Juneteenth, to do the Tomato Festival, things that, the Macedonia Festival, things that I heard about but never really took the time to engage in. Mm -hmm. And so there's always something going on, even like this weekend with Halloween, there's always something that you can do. There's always something you can participate in. And I think though we have to do a better job of hitting those pockets of people that don't watch the Joe show, are not on social media like me, um, what do we do to make sure that we're reaching more of Reynoldsburg to share? Because there is so much to do. Yeah. There is so much to be involved in. So that's been probably one of my most exciting things, going to grand openings for stores or our new library. It's just been an adventure. It very much is. Well, I do appreciate you coming on. Do you have a little bit of time to stick with me for a little while? Sure. All right. Any questions popped up? No. Nope. See? There we go. All right. So I know we all know that there's an election going on, and we're about just a little under three weeks, but early vote is available in Licking County, Fairfield County, and Franklin County. So if you have not voted and you want an early vote, check out the Board of Elections website so you can figure that one out. Uh, we know that there's a school levy coming up. Um, the levy request is for 6.65 mills, or approximately $233 per $100,000. Um, one question that we always get and that I see when the school district is responding is, you know, apartments. Do they pay property taxes? Do they do that? Because in rent, it doesn't have a line in rent where it says, this is my school tax. 
but property uh, taxes do come out. So Woodview Plaza, which is actually right across the street from the Livingston campus, they pay $99,293 and the all important 56 cents. And then when you break that down per unit, that's about $468.37 per unit. So they do pay that in there. So in that rent, that is actually part of that process. Um, so that kind of gives everybody an idea. Uh, and the nice thing is you only have a couple more weeks um, of me having to talk about that. So then we'll kind of move on from those things. Uh, there is a community question and answer session at the Senior Center actually tomorrow uh, between the superintendent and the treasurer will be out there um, from 11.30 to 12.30. Um, so I know they're looking forward to that because we all know that the people, the part of our community that's hit with these property taxes are our senior citizens. Um, if you've been watching the news, there have been a lot of discussions um, that even during campaign season for the state house and whatnot, they are talking about some property tax relief options uh, for senior citizens. So hopefully something is on the way, uh, but I would reach out to your state representatives and state senators and let them know how important of an issue that is. Uh, we also have some cool things going on. Uh, the Reynoldsburg and Pickerington uh, will have a food drive. Uh, so we play that team across 256 a week from Friday, I believe. And so you're gonna start to see a bunch of stuff where they're gonna come out with um, a food drive. So basically we wanna win on the field, but we also wanna try and collect as many uh, food items as possible. So the schools are gonna let us know what locations. I'm sure both high schools will have them. I think the individual other schools will have a receptacle and we're probably gonna try and get something here or at least at the Board of Education office across the street. Uh, but we want some bragging rights. Last year, we weren't really successful on either side uh, of, of that one. So we wanna make sure uh, that we do a better job in each case. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We also have our Reynoldsburg Police Department is accepting um, donations for Shop with a Cop. Um, this is always a good thing. So if you wanna go ahead and donate a gift card to the police department, uh, they'll start that in. The gift cards will be accepted until November 25th, uh, and then I'm sure they're gonna take advantage of some of those after Thanksgiving Day sales and take care of those types of things. Um, I was gonna talk about the women's defense class, um, which if you haven't had a chance to take part of this, please, you gotta, you gotta do it. It's a lot of fun, uh, but it's full this time, so you have to wait. Uh, advertised it last year, the, the class is full. Basically, it's four classes, I think yeah, four classes for about three hours each, uh, each time and uh, women from 12 and up can take it. And while I wish it wasn't needed, it is a great class. My wife's been a part of it. A lot of staff members here have done it. Um, there's some parts that are kind of like classroom oriented where you're just kind of learning a little bit about certain things and tendencies that we have that are probably putting people at risk. And then you get to the fun stuff where you get to toss some people around uh, and things like that. So uh, that's always a fun thing. But keep an eye, usually we do a couple of these a year. So probably the next one will be after the first of the year. Um, council uh, was this past week, and uh, thankfully, uh, I'm very happy to say that our uh, service building, uh, Parks and Service Building, it was approved. Uh, so we're going to be getting to work on that. Um, this is something that doesn't cost the taxpayers anything else. We're doing this on our own. Uh, it's going to be a thirty-one million six hundred and some odd nice six hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars or so. Um, and so we're going to bring that in, and we're going to consolidate. We're going to take some of the uh, parks and water department that's off Turo Road, and we're going to consolidate all that and have a new complex right on where, behind the bus garage where our street department is. Uh, it's going to be a great building that has been desperately needed. I know people have been talking about this here for, I heard, 30-plus years that they've been trying to get this building taken care of. So we are now in a position to get that done. Uh, so you'll probably start seeing some things. Uh, getting some, you know, clearing some of the land in the next couple of weeks, and the major construction will probably start just after the first of the year, depending on what the weather is like. Um, I know that's not the most exciting thing in the world, but the reality is for our staff and for our community, it allows us to better serve everybody. Um, it's also all the ADA requirements, all the OSHA requirements are in there. Um, they'll have a separate area to eat lunch instead of right next to a bathroom because nobody likes that, and yes, that's what it is. Uh, things of that nature. Now, if you're asking what are we going to do with the land by where the parks and water department are right now, right now we're leaning towards making it additional park space. Um, ultimately, council will kind of weigh in on their thoughts on it, but uh, I know the big pull around here is making that some additional park space to kind of connect Huber Park onto the other side to kind of get into the back side of uh, the Old Town area. So that's what we're looking at right now. Um, the walk and talk, like I mentioned, we're going to start tonight at 6.30. We're going to be over off of Berkey, which is, um, or I'm sorry, uh, Broadwin, which will be on the other side of Berkey. I'm going to start at Broadwin, uh, and you'll see me there. I'll be the guy with the big trash bag and the trash picker. Uh, we'll go from Broadwin to Valley Drive, down to Berkey, and then back over to uh, Broadwin. 
Um, so it's something that's fun. I think your group was really big. Uh, the group that I had a couple weeks ago was really big, uh, but there are other times where it's just me out there. Um, so we're probably going to put out a poll in the next week or so, like once we get done with um, the, the amazing things we've got set up for this weekend. Uh, if people are interested in it, they want us to do this again, and we'll take recommendations for streets. Um, usually for the streets, the only thing that I try and do is I try and get something where I can do a loop. So I can start in one place, kind of go around and see a little bit of everything, and then come back to that part of it. Um, some people with, were with us the entire time that night. Other yeah. people kind of dropped off as we were moving along. They said, okay, they got their answers and things that they wanted to hear. So we'll talk about that. Um, we do have some Wagner Road news. We'll have more officially tomorrow. So right now, um, Columbus has completed its chlorination. So the water line that we put in, which is brand new, that will service all of Wagner Road, um, that has been pressurized and chlorinated, so that will be there. Now what they're doing is they're making those connections. So the new water lines will be connected to all of the various things. Should take maybe a few more days. We'll find out tomorrow how far along they are. Once that part is done, that's when they're going to go ahead and shut Wagner Road down at the bridge. Um, so you'll see all of that stuff. We'll probably put up an update sometime tomorrow after our meeting. Uh, the bridge will be closed down, so you will not be able to drive onto Wagner Road and go that direction. But you will have north and south access, meaning if you're coming from Broad Street or anywhere from Broad Street really to Priestley, you'll be able to go northbound or southbound. Or for those of you that are directionally challenged, you can go towards Broad Street. You can still come towards Main Street, but you're going to get to a bridge and then that's all you're going to be able to do. Don't worry, there'll be big signs that say road close. But it'll allow much more uh, traffic flow all the way through there. Uh, but that bridge is uh, part of the Franklin County jurisdiction, so those are things that we have to improve on that part for them. Uh, you're probably going to see some of us doing like the, the walls for the bridge. That's what's being worked on right now. The way they call them wing walls, uh, but that'll be up there. So keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, any questions so far? No. Nope. All right. Do we have anybody watching? Did everybody forget that it was later? We have people watching. Okay, just making sure. I just, <laughs> at, three, at 12 o'clock, the siren went off. We're all kind of looking around like, what do we do? I don't know. So, um, as far as our parks department, uh, which does a great job, and they've got a lot of cool things coming up, the first one is the Mel Clemens Community Service Award. Uh, we are accepting nominations uh, for anyone who has displayed um, outstanding volunteer service in the community in the last year. Uh, these are people that have done a lot, that have volunteered, uh, have helped in some kind of capacity all the way throughout. So if you're interested in nominating somebody uh, for the Mel Clemens Community Service Award, um, feel free to check out the Parks and Recreation page. Uh, I think they're going to take nominations for a little while longer. Uh, I've got some programming coming up. They have the Mother-Son Halloween Dance, which is next Thursday from 6.30 to 8 at our Senior Center. We also have this Friday Spooky Storytime at Civic Park from 7 to 9 p.m. So if you're interested in that one, that's this Friday. Um, register on the Parks page. I think it's $5 per family, and you get to a little bit of a thing with our, our parks, uh, park ranger out there talking about some stuff. Um, we do have a cool update for uh, everybody that's always been asking, hey, what's going on at the old Kmart location? That's always been a big thing. We've talked about the Alliance before. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you a picture. Um, it is a little bit different than what it was before, but the elements, a lot of the elements are still there. Uh, you're still going to have your two restaurants, your restaurant on the corner of Bryson, Maine, and then you'll have your restaurant uh, kind of on the other side in between McDonald's and Taco Bell. You'll also have some restaurant and retail on the front part by Bryce Road. Their building is going to be pushed off to the side a little bit. They're still going to have their office building there, and it's still going to have a coffee shop, but everything else is there. Now, there are other areas in there that a later date could turn into more restaurant and retail, if that's what it's looking like and things like that. But that's going before the Planning and Zoning Commission tomorrow night. Assuming that gets approved, um, then that's when that process will start, and then you'll start seeing those things pick up again after the first of the year. Uh, biggest reason for that is cost of materials and things of that nature, and uh, this organization uh, did not want to go into debt for it, so they're paying everything with cash. Uh, they're not like bringing like a suitcase full of cash, they're actually doing other things, but they're paying for it in cash. But they're coming back and they're going to get that project started real soon. So uh, This weekend we also have another fun thing uh, for those of, us, those of us that like to get a little, get a little rough and tumble and dirty when we're working. Uh, the, uh, Civic Park is going to have a volunteer event um, with the Franklin County Soil and Water District, our Reynoldsburg Parks and Recreation Department, and our Reynoldsburg Storm Water Team. We're going to head out to the backside of Civic Park, and we're going to clear out some invasive species and do a little litter cleanup. Uh, we do this uh, every other every year, uh, and if uh, that doesn't sound enticing enough for you to go ahead and start pulling out some trees and things like that, uh, there will be coffee and donuts there. So that's always a fun thing. 
Um, for those of you that are uh, for around the Senior Center, I will actually be there next week on Tuesday from 11.30 to 12.30 to answer any and all of your questions. I enjoy going out to the Senior Center. Um, as long as I don't go over my time and interrupt Euchre, I, I am welcome there. But if I get close to that time, you can start seeing people get a little twitchy about it. So I promise I'll stay on time. Uh, Trick or Treat is also coming up as well, Thursday, October 31st. You know, that's near and dear to my heart. That's my favorite holiday. Um, it is from 6 to 8 o'clock, and it is rain or shine, and that's just the way it is. Uh, so this will be the last year that it will be on the 31st. Uh, then it's going to revert back to whatever day that Thursday is before the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because as a region, Central Ohio has agreed not to go that particular route. Things can change. Maybe we'll see. But for the most part, uh, keeping it on a Thursday night is good just because of um, making sure that we have all of our resources ready for that particular event. Uh, but if you can't wait till the 31st, you've got all sorts of things going on. Uh, we have our Reynoldsburg Community Association uh, Halloween party on this, this Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. right here at JFK. There's going to be games and food. There's going to be a DJ, costume contest, all of those fun things. We're also going to have a Jurassic Park display and dinosaurs that will be wandering around the area from 6 to 8 o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to join us, if you have one of those dino costumes or your kids have a dino costume, make sure they come out because we're going to have a couple of trucks from the actual Jurassic Park movie out with all the decals and everything so we can get our pictures taken next to them and have some fun with that. There'll be some other design dinosaur trails all the way throughout uh, the area, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you're not interested in the dinosaur thing, but you still want to come out to JFK Park, uh, starting at 4 o'clock, you're going to have the Haunted Vendor Valley. So there's about 20-some-odd vendors that are going to be there selling all sorts of things that are... Are they all Halloween-related, or is it Halloween and other stuff? It's a mix. It's a mix of everything. Yeah. That's, I'm okay with that as long as there's Halloween things there. <laughs> uh, but they'll be there uh, from Saturday from 4 to 9 p.m. We also have the Spooky Pooch Parade on Sunday. It's from 1 to 4 right here at JFK Park, and the parade's starting around 2 o'clock. Sometimes some of our costume friends take a little bit longer to wrangle up for the parade, but 2 o'clock is when we're going to aim for it. And on top of all of that, we have the ginormous pumpkin that is already out right now in the gazebo at JFK that's going to be worked on by some pretty impressive people. These are people that have appeared on Halloween Wars, on uh, all the various channels that are out there, and you're going to see them actually carve this thing into an amazing creature. If you remember what they did last year, it was you know kind of a cool-looking, I mean, big teeth and spiders and all sorts of Halloween-type stuff. Don't worry, it wasn't scary. It was okay. <laughs> no. I hear you. All right. <laughs> Any questions so far? Yep. All right. Um, other things going on? Um, that's really about it for this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know I will be there on Saturday and Sunday uh, if I can get my little pup into a costume, because my German Shepherd will not do it, but if my little one gets into a costume, I think we're going to bring her in and, and take care of that. It's a little Pomeranian. It's like this big, but she thinks she's about that big. Uh, but we have a costume where it's uh, literally a, uh, a squirrel on a surfboard that rides on the back, which is, again, one of those <laughs> things that we think are cute that everyone else goes, wow, you spent money on that? Yes, we did. We have a fire dog, so yep. he's not social, so we won't be bringing him home. <laughs> my, again, my dog thinks he's the boss dog. Um, it's always fun. Uh, next week, we actually have, and this is not because it's coming close to Halloween, but it's pretty much to it. We actually have the Franklin County Coroner, Nate Obermeyer, actually is coming in because we wanted, uh, yep, exactly. We wanted to bring the coroner in for this one. Um, so he will be joining us uh, to talk about all of those interesting stories that I know he has. Uh, but we are also going to have another first time guest. Uh, we're going to have Reynoldsburg City School Board member Kendra McKay, who recently joined the school board. I'm sure that she'll be almost as excited to join us uh, as you are, uh, but she'll be here and probably answer some questions about the levy and things like that. So we're really looking forward to all of those different types of things. Uh, please remember, um, vote. Um, you got to get out and do it. If you want to be part, you know, democracy is a participation sport, and if you want to make sure that your views are held out there, you got to go out and do so. Um, there are plenty of ways to help all the way across that people love, like. If you don't know where I live, just drive around and we find the house that has the most political signs, that's probably my house, but that's part of the idea with this. Um, people need to go out and vote and kind of go that route, uh, however it is that you do so. Uh, but everybody else, um, uh, I'm looking, do we have questions? One. All right, see, I knew it. I can tell when I can tell when you're close <laughs> to the end. Then we're like, all right, let's put this one in. Can we make sure to put down asphalt around metal plates on Wagner? I recently had mm -hmm. a tire damage. Yep, yeah, they're going to be moving through because obviously we got to kind of smooth that out as best we can now that traffic's going to be going north and southbound. Really good question. Yep. 
All right. If that's not if that's all, we'll go ahead and move forward with that. The, uh, again, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to the city the rest of the week or find me this weekend or tonight. Uh, but everybody else, please stay safe, stay respectful, and as always, please put your shopping carts away. Thanks, everybody. Thank you again, Councilwoman. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you it guys next week. I figured you'd enjoy it.